Only the Sky Crane, with its capacity and its speed, could keep up with the requirements of the continuous pour. Each bucket contains four cubic yards of concrete, and before it's finished, the Sky Crane will deliver 1,750 cubic yards of concrete for the leveling pad. Yes, the tower foundations will be sturdy. After the concrete pads had cured, precast foundation pedestals were flown to the tower sites. Four precasts per tower. Because of the hillside terrain, these foundation units are designed in four different heights to make sure the towers will be level. An inch or two of grout is spread on top of the leveling pad to facilitate the exact placement of the precast unit and to provide a watertight bond. The Sky Crane has two pilots. The forward pilot flies it to and from the site. The rear-facing pilot handles the machine at the site, a precision job to set these units at the exact spot dictated by engineering design. Construction progress is going well, but the fight against the relentless calendar must continue. Drilling for the rock bolts is started on June 2nd. The drill pierces deep into bedrock below. Plastic cartridges of a specially designed epoxy are forced into the hole. Dewey Dag bars will bolt this whole unit to the bedrock to ensure support for the tower in its war against old man winter. Controlled tensioning is applied by a hydraulic jack. Once the rock bolts are in place and the epoxy hardens, the footing is one solid unit from foundation to bedrock. Corps of Engineers inspectors were at the site each day, checking the progress every step of the way. Each precast unit has a hole in the center to accommodate the anchor bolts for the tower legs. Concrete, a special mix, is placed in the center hole to secure the anchor bolts. Next, the placement of the anchor bolt cage. These had been assembled at the marshalling yard. It's precision work and no mistakes can be allowed because the first tower sections must have a perfect a bit, fit. Jim. Hold that. That's good. A final touch of waterproofing is the last step in completion of the rock bolt section. Environmentalists will applaud this part of the job, though it may seem minor. Dirt is spread around the footings to restore the original ground level and minimize the ecological impact of the power line construction. It's a far cry from just leaving the down timber strewn about. Meanwhile, tower work had started back on May 18th at the Juneau Marshalling Yard. The Ericsson construction format calls for the towers to be assembled, complete with hardware and insulators, before they are flown to the job site. We designed special equipment for this assembly job. Summer is wearing on and everyone knows construction stopping winter weather is not too far away. It's now July 20th. Foundation work is nearing completion and the job of erecting steel begins. A Bell 205 helicopter is utilized for the placement of the tower starter sections. Before the helicopter heads back to the marshalling yard for the second section, workmen start bolting the first into place. Extreme care is used in positioning and securing these starter sections because perfection here enables a speedy placement of the main tower. Show business people would say it's time for the big finish, and in a way that's just what this is. The Sky Crane is the only helicopter capable of lifting the main tower section. 49 of these towers were assembled completely at the marshalling yard, but to facilitate that assembly process, the towers were in a horizontal position. Our engineers had to devise a system to raise the towers vertically without bending the metal legs from the sheer weight of the tower. 
Ericsson engineers found the answer, a supporting metal arm that would distribute the weight during the vertical lift. Those metal arms are removed prior to the sky crane flight. Early in the tower construction game, Ericsson engineers licked a serious problem by devising for the sky crane a framework of special, light, high-strength aluminum. The frame prevents the tower from any circular rotation when it's winched into place. The only way the tower can turn now is for the sky crane to turn. This is where the Ericsson air crane system really shines. It's an incredible sight. No other helicopter can do what you're seeing the sky crane do right now. Completing the Juno job in one construction season without the sky crane would have been literally impossible. In spite of the tremendous weight of the steel tower, it takes the sky crane just a few minutes flight time from the marshalling yard pickup until the setting of the tower. Over the site, the sky crane hovers under control of the rear-facing pilot. One Ericsson safety rule is that nobody can be under the tower when it's being lowered into place. This puts the job of setting the tower squarely on the shoulders of the rear-facing pilot. And believe me, he knows what he's doing. As good as our pilots are, their job would be virtually impossible without another Ericsson engineering achievement, the tower guide system. A cable system on the bottom of the tower fits into metal arms extending from the leg sections. The unit is lowered onto the guide arms and voila, the tower is in place. Fresh from another success, the sky crane operator releases the hooks electrically and speeds back to Juno for another tower. As soon as the sky crane leaves, workmen climb the tower to insert and tighten the proper bolts and to take down the guide system. This tower is now ready for conductor, the final phase of this well-organized race against winter. The experience gained by leading the field in aerial tower construction will enable us to meet the construction deadline in this phase of the operation in spite of the problems created by the Alaskan terrain and the weather factors. Three feet! Two feet! Six inches! You're on the stops. Cut your load. The Ericsson system is the ultimate in aerial transmission tower work. Immediately following the erection of a tower, Ground crews place a mix of cement and sand around the base plate to prevent any winter ice buildup between the tower base and the precast. Again, protection of the environment is uppermost in the Ericsson plans. Workmen seed the tower site with the natural ground cover that was there before the work began. This will aid plant growth. The king of the Juno skies, the sky crane, goes back into action carrying equipment for our next specialty, the stringing of conductor. That's good. Down another five feet. Designers had modified this wire pulling machine for aerial power line construction. Again, only the sky crane has the lifting force to carry this big reel of sock line. That line will lead the conductor through the towers. Ericsson's highly maneuverable Hughes 500 takes over the leading role in the construction drama. It's getting late in the race. It's August 25th. Winter would be the winner if this line had to be set by hand. But the pilot quickly maneuvers the sock line into each guide arm and onto a specially designed traveler. Maneuvering his craft like a cowboy would a cutting horse, the pilot strings the line through a traveler on each tower until the end of the pull. Only pilots experienced with our system could beat the clock in this race. 